All set here at the Adelaide Oval for the start of the 1969 Grand Final between Sturt and the Glenelg. Both sides unchanged, reserves for the Glenelg, Mark Corns and Ainsbury, umpire in charge, umpire Bob Hall. Weather conditions, fine, the sun is out at the moment. A light breeze uh, favouring the northern goal, and that's the end to which Sturt will be kicking in this first quarter. Bob Seaman won the toss, kicking towards the northern end, which is to the left of your screen. set for the start of them the game and away they go wild at Sturt gets the tap out Sturt in the light colours kicking with the breeze a slight breeze towards the northern end of the Adelaide Oval the ground in extremely good condition Silbrick from centre half forward up towards Greenslade coming out from the forward line and Greenslade marks the ball in the forward pocket 35 yards out Malcolm Greenslade the Sturt full forward to take the first kick at goal for the game from 35 40 yards out on a bit of an angle see it again in action replay a great start by Sturt a goal in the first 30 seconds of play Sturt playing in their fifth successive grand final they've won the last three are going for four in a row Donald not have not happened won a premiership since 1934 Sturt into attack again out towards the half forward flank looking that time for Bagshaw chance for Smith to gather it in on the half back line and Smith of Donald comes around gets his boot to it swings the ball across towards the centre wing position Sturt playing in the light short and Glenelg in the dark next. The ball out on the centre wing. Ridney number four. The Raiders for Sturt. Gets the hand pass. Intercepted. Glenelg a chance to go forward. Right up towards the half forward flank position. Play goes on. The ball up in the half forward flank position for Sturt. For Glenelg. A long kick goes in towards the forward pocket position. Chance there for Hamilton. And Hamilton marks the ball right on the boundary line. And would be about 45 yards out. A 15 yard penalty being applied to. Which brings him closer to the goal. Now the ball has been played on, though it's the 15-yard penalty is being played, and Hamilton will take this kick, and he is uh, about 30 yards out on the angle. Chance for Hamilton to equal the scores. He's on the angle, a pretty acute angle. He's up line and through for one point. One behind to Glenelg, one goal to Sturt. They've been playing two minutes in the first quarter. And the football's electrifying at this stage. The bigger the crowd, more noise, the better the football. The kick in going to be taken by Joe. Garrett will favour the other side. The wind is uh, blowing straight down the ground with Sturt having first advantage of this light breeze. The kick by Jarrett comes out to the other side. Quite a good kick. Looking for Wild. Wild's in front. Sport by Curley. Down towards Marker. The hand pass comes out to Hamilton. He grabbed very quickly. Gets the hand pass away to Boyd. He grabbed low, but it comes back to, her, uh, to uh, Patterson. And he caught hold of the ball. And Patterson has given that free away and going to be taken by Jarrett. Jarrett had plenty of time to get rid of that ball then. Here's the kick going to be taken by Jarrett. Quite a good punt kick coming more or less up towards centre field. And the Kernahan spoiled. It comes down the ground with a long hand pass down towards Hart. Centre half forward. Magnificent play Hart. Beautiful hand pass to Marker. This has set the goal up for Glenelg. That is coming down towards Bergen. Out towards Boyd. Boyd has a shot for goal. Initiated by Royce Hart. Royce Hart set that goal up for Glenelg. He uh, back turned beautifully out of trouble and got the hand pass away to Marker and then found Voigt in front of goal and Voigt cleverly back turned and put through Glenelg's first goal. Sturt uh, one goal, Glenelg 1-1. One, one. From the bounce again, it's uh, Wild in opposition to Kernahan, taken by Chessel up towards the half forward line and it's uh, Bagshaw there and Bagshaw's out from over his opponent and taking a very good mark on the half forward right flank position. Bagshaw on the half forward right flank position. Usually a very long kick. Bagshaw with a drop kick, a magnificent kick going right across the goal, however. And Wild flies high, looks as though he's marked it. 
Now it's play on, comes to Noonan, he snaps for goal, but it goes right across the goal and point line and going out of bounds on the far side, about 30 yards around from the from the third goal. Mickey Noonan could have had a quick look at the goals and he just picked the ball up and snapped and I know the first couple of minutes of the grand final is hard. Uh, from the throw-in in the forward area for Sturt, it comes out towards uh, Bagshaw. Uh, Bagshaw couldn't pick it up, knocked away by Hunt, picked up by Noonan. He snaps for the left foot, cut up the through the middle. And Sturt have two goals on the board, and uh, Glenelg got 1-1. One, one. Good work to young McNoonan then, made me hit the words. Very good play there, looked around before he kicked that time, left foot, made no mistake whatsoever. A great little player, a great team man. Those comments from State Captain Johnny Cale. Sturt, two goals there behind, 12 points on the board, and Glenelg one goal, one seven points. Umpire Bob Hall in charge of today's game. Ruck Stewart there, chance here for Rose Warren, puts Glenelg into attack, up towards centre half forward, half of half foot, but uh, he's a defensive step up for him, but good football by Sturt, coming out in defence, a long kick up towards their half forward line, gives the opportunity, back to whips the hand pass to Rigney, Rigney is 40 yards out, almost directly in front, fires a three, Let's have a look at that one again in action replay. Start the experience side in today's grand final. Playing in their fifth successive grand final, have quickly Got into their stride. Three goals no behind 18 points. Glenelg one goal, one behind seven points. Sturt with the advantage of a slight breeze in this first quarter. The ball in the centre of the ground. A lot of players around the ball. And uh, it comes eventually out. Gives the opportunity for Sturt to kick it out wide towards centre wing on the grandstand side. Here's the chance. Throw the centre wing position. What tremendous football so early in the game. Four goals in four minutes. Horrific with so much strain on the players. Roney and Wild go for the toe of and getting up, getting the tap, comes out in the direction of Chester. He can't get it. Early comes in hard. The ball comes into the open, gives a chance for Hicks. Hicks across towards two books. Two books in front of court. Play on to his umpire hall. He comes in towards the centre of the ground. Opportunity here, but umpire hall has seen an infringement. And the free kick is going to McNoonan. Yes, McNoonan played the ball, his objective. Here's the kick by Noonan. Comes down towards the half forward left wing position. And the free side of the mark. That's good mark. Against Rowe, he was in front position, and already Green Slade has uh, given uh, Sturt a very good spearhead at which to aim their attack. Green Slade about 55 yards out from goal on about a 45 degree angle. Good quick go, Green Slade, but it's going offline and through for one point. First goal on the uh, first point on the board for Sturt are 3 1 to Glenelg 1 1. Green Slade at full forward, John. Greenslade's going to be a big danger for Glenelg today. He leads so fast, he's such a long kick and a high mark. I, I think that Roll have to keep right on his toes to keep Greenslade out of the game. Greenslade moving uh, very fast and away from the full forward area and giving uh, Sturt half forwards and centre line a good spearhead at which to attack. A magnificent kick in by Rowe out to the far side. This allows Trapp into the play, play playing from behind the pack. It's down across to the half forward line to Marker and also Brooks. Brooks gets a defensive hand pass away. This is Hart going for it in some position. They crowd on Hart very quickly. And he's just flat out on the ground. He received a heavy knock, but he's going to get a three. Oh, they ran right into Hart. And he looks as though he's out cold. Yes, he looks in trouble at this stage. Well, Hart, Hart was well open uh, for any uh, player to come through. And they hit Hart very solidly. And he looks to be out on his feet. And notice Shearman there uh, looking at what's uh, going to happen. And if the heart can't take the free, it's got to be bounced. And umpire Hall is going to bounce the ball. And Hart's in a lot of trouble. Here's the uh, knock away. Comes out towards Eustace. Very close to going out. And Eustace runs out of bounds. Too many trainers around Hart. They should, he give, should give him more room to breathe there. Here's a throw in again, and Otten gets the knock down to Rigney. Rigney dodges around and kicks up towards the half forward line to a shot, and Shop has taken a mark. Well, what magnificent football we're seeing in this opening of uh, the game here, this grand final for 1969. 15 yard penalty bringing Shop up forward. There's uh, Hart in the trainer's hand, and he seemed to be knocked out cold. 
Here's the kick by Shop going to fall short up to the 10 yard square. Hunt slides, couldn't pick it up, picked up by Noonan. Noonan tries a hand pass away to Rigney, couldn't do so. Curly there battling desperately and hauls right on the spot. And what a heavy lot of work going on. And there's Hart back up uh, once again and after receiving a very heavy but fair knock. Here's the bounce down, right down in front of third goal. A good knock away by Kernahan comes out towards the half back line uh, to uh, the half back player and has gone, been forced out of bounds. There's Hart. Very speedy at this stage. Very groggy. Here's the throw in on the half forward uh, flank position. It comes out to the uh, knock down towards Voigt. Voigt kicks up towards Eustace and Sherman. Eustace didn't go for the ball. He didn't have his eye on it. But to the mark being taken by Sherman and the minute to the play. Tempers are getting fried so early in the game. Well, this is very important in the first quarter. Whatever team can set up an advantage. An unchecked Rigney goes over his head. Comes down towards Curley. Overruns the ball. Picked up by Voigt. Left foot's out towards the half-back line to Eustace. Eustace juggles a mark. It's a rather an easy mark. Grabbed by Short. Hurriedly kicks away. And a hand pass comes out wide onto the half-back flank. And it's going to be cleared by Smith up towards the centre position. Very close to going out. And now it's forced out of bounds at centre wing. Third of 3-1 in the magnificent opening. Glenelg 1-1. Chairman and Eustace are using plenty of body against each other. Ten minutes gone so far in the first quarter. It's been an electrifying opening. The ball into the centre of the ground this time. A chance for Glenelg to go forward, but good defensive play. Chance here. Paul Nelson's got the ball in front of him, comes out there. Uh, players all over the ball. Eventually he's picked up by Button. Button tries a hand pass. There's a lot of players around the ball at the moment. Comes out to hit, hit the hand pass. Noonan. Noonan's got it to the centre half forward. He's a long way up, but drives a magnificent long kick from 55. Bert, four goals, one. Four, one. 25 points for nil. One goal, one behind seven points. A three goals lead to Sturt after 11 minutes of play in the first quarter. Noonan dominating the Rovers at this stage. A good quick handball by Darrell Hicks there. Beautiful straight to Noonan who made no mistake again. Noonan, two goals. A very elusive player and a dangerous player up there breaking away from around about the half forward line. Here's a chance for Glenelg, an opportunity for Hart to pick it up. Hart goes down again. He got a heavy one in the last 10 minutes of play on the grand final in Victoria last Saturday, and he's already in trouble today. Out it comes. Here's a chance for Glenelg. The ball picked up by Eustace. Eustace flattened after he kicked the ball, and the free kick has been played upfield. It will be taken by Freddie Phyllis. Eustace met pretty solidly. Just after we delivered the ball and the free kick being paid by umpire Bob Hall to Fred Phillips. Phillips who needs two more goals to break the all-time South Australian record of 134 goals for the season from Ken Farmer. Well, here's Phillips. He's way out, about 50 yards from goal. Out on the half-forward flank. He's allowed for the win too much. It's going right up between the goal and behind post. They fly for it. And in front of the pack, the mark is taken by the Sturt back pocket player, Brenton Adcock. 4-1-25 Sturt and Glenelg 1-1-7. Ball coming out now between centre and the half-back line for third. Opportunity here for Bagshaw. Bagshaw uh, attempts the hand pass, but in the meantime, umpire Hall has blown the whistle for an infringement of Bagshaw, who will take the free kick between centre and the half-back line. There's a lot of backhanders for so early, too. It's been desperation football so far in the first 12 minutes of play in this grand final of the Adelaide Oval. Weather conditions just about perfect for football and ABC cameras bringing you this coverage this afternoon. The ball up towards the centre half forward position. Beautiful mark for Pilgrim. One of the danger players. You can never leave him alone for five minutes, this fellow. A match winner on his day. He's got the ball well out of goal. He's uh, about 65, 75 yards out. There's the long kick from Tilbrook. It's a magnificent one. Just fails to reach the distance. And the mark is taken by Glenelg fullback row. 4-1-25 Sturt and Glenelg 1-1-7. Here's the kick going to be taken by Rowe after a very well-judged chess mark out towards the half-back line to Colby, and Colby holds a very good mark. He plays on immediately, not a very good kick out towards Kernahan. Kernahan now looks for a hand pass to Eustace. Eustace now puts a left foot once again up towards the half-forward line, looking for marker, and Curley, look at Curley going. He's showing an abundance of pace. He gets a hand pass away, caught without the ball, no free. That comes down on the turf once again, and Bergen's caught by holding the ball, and Bergen's given this free away, and serves. Glenelga going into attack very quickly, up towards Patterson, and it goes over Patterson's head, down towards Hart. He has the ball taken off him, and here's Hart out with the ball. A hand pass across to Button, and Button shoots up towards goal, but it's going offline, and out of bounds in the full forward left pocket. That possibly would have been the fastest I've ever seen Neil Curley run. 
he's certainly trying to lift his side and he needs to at this stage with Sturt three goal up 4-1 Sturt are 4-1 to Zanelg 1-1 the throw in in the full forward left pocket position comes out towards Rigney gets a hand pass away across to Adcock Adcock turns back into trouble but kicks solidly out towards the half back flank position a battle for the ball going on no it's not out of bounds and Sturt Zanelg comes forward up towards the half forward line and this is Marker going for it. He's brought by Brooks. Comes down on the ground to Chessel. Chessel with a hand pass at Kevin. He's run into turn ahead. Elbow. My goodness me. That was a solid one. That comes across the shop. Good play, Sturt. Up to one. And a good mark taken by Otten. Sturt are playing much better as a team. They're looking for the player going past with the handball. A lot more constructive at this stage. Very quick handballing, as you say, John Cale. Here's the kick by Otten. 30 yards up from goal. Right in front. And it's right through the middle. Ronaldo 1-1. My word, what an electrifying start for a grand final. Most players are generally a bit overawed for the grand final and you haven't played football till you've played in the grand final. Let's look at it again an action replay. That goal from Ottens has put uh, Sturt four goals in front after 15 minutes of play in the first quarter of the grand final. Ball out between centre and centre wing position. Sturt using handball effectively. Short gets this one across there. Stillbrook on his own. Comes in. Dummies very cleverly. Hand past the shot. Shot to the centre half forward. Not a terribly good kick. Had it be cut off by Hunt. Hunt marking the ball. And a very timely mark too with Grinnell with Sturt looking very, very dangerous. Hunt marking between full back and centre half back. Sends a high punt kick up almost into the centre of the ground. Almost a chance for Clark. He couldn't mark the ball. It's knocked on into the centre of the ground. Here's a chance for Chessel. Hand pass quickly across to Nelson. Nelson comes right through the centre. Another hand pass to Rigney. Rigney's got it almost at centre half forward. Bumps heavily as he gets rid of the ball. It goes up towards centre half forward. Chance here for back. Shaw sends a hand pass in the direction of uh, Ottens. A lot of players around the ball there. Almost in the centre half forward position for Sturt. Umpire Hall has called for the ball and he's going to bounce it. Too much handball in that passage of play there. One good kick could have had it right in the goal square. Umpire Bob Hall umpiring his first grand final. Locked away in the ruck by Ottens. Chance here for Patton. Pattinson bats solidly. Gets it in the direction of uh, Kernahan. Who boots the ball off the ground. Out towards centre wing. Mark taken there by Brooks. Yes, it's been allowed by Umpire Hall. Brooks between centre and centre wing on the other side of the Adelaide Oval. Sturt with the advantage of a slight breeze in the first quarter. Kick it into the centre and find Chessel. A lot of players unmarked in this first quarter. The opening for Sturt. The kick from Chessel. A nice drop kick to position across towards the centre. Half forward position almost marked by Greenslade. Taken by Otten. Otten turns on with his left foot. He's about 50 yards out. Boots the ball right up towards the tall timber. They fly for right on the goal square. And the mark taken in defence by Hunt. Great mark by Hunt then, running back into the play. Hunt from between the goal and behind post, kicking it out towards the half-back flank position. Not a good kick to position, and the mark is taken by Big Otten. Otten for Sir Ruckman, marking the ball, left half-forward flank. Would be out 45, 50 yards from goal. Sir 5-131, Glenelg 117. They've been playing for 17 and a half minutes in the first quarter. Otten, it's a good try, swinging away, and has gone through for one point. 5-2, now 32 points Sturt and Glenelg 117. Umpire Hall with the ball in the centre of the ground, ready to set them on their way for the second half of this grand final. At quarter time, Sturt with a brilliant burst in the first quarter, led by four goals. At half time, that increased the lead slightly to 27 points. The scoreboard, Sturt 10 goals, 7, 67 points, to Glenelg 5, 10, 40. In the second quarter, Glenelg kicked three goals, 7, to Sturt 4 goals, 4. In this quarter, Sturt with the advantage of a very slight breeze, kicking towards the left of your screen, and Shearman puts them into attack with a high punt kick right up towards the centre half forward position. They fly for it behind the pack of players, almost a chance. Colby dives into the pack there, and the umpire Hall is calling for it, and he's going to bounce the ball between centre and centre half forward for Sturt. A big crowd at the Adelaide Oval, around about the 55, 60,000 mark, I would think. Curly sends to Nelgut to attack. A chance for Eustace. Knocked the ball on, knocked away by Crabb, across the marker, marker onto the left foot quickly, across towards the half forward flank position, chance for Nelson, couldn't mark the ball, but he's backed up well by Bergen, and the ball is kicked away by Sturt, right up towards their half forward line, and the mark is taken by Bagshaw. Bagshaw, a good player, particularly in the second quarter for Sturt, comes in now for his tenth kick, it's a magnificent kick from Bagshaw, right into the ten yard square, chance for Greenslade, and he's got a through. 
another goal that Green Slade has hit. Green Slade has kicked five goals for and has been a very dangerous player at full forward all day. Further ahead, third now with that goal, 11 goals, 7, 73 points to 5, 10, 40 points. Once okay. again, the attack come from Bagshaw. And what a difference it makes when the ball's delivered properly to the forwards. A beautiful 65-yard drop kick. Just come off the fall of the hands. Green Slade reading the ball well. Made no mistake whatsoever. I noticed, uh, John, that uh, Smith is on Tilbrook. I think that change was made uh, just before half-time. Now, from the bounce away again, it's Kernahan palming down beautifully to Rosewood up to centre half forward heart. A very good mark at centre half forward in front position in front of Nelson. Hart to left footer. Hart with the left foot kick. It's a bad kick. It's coming deep down to the forward pocket. It's picked up uh, by Button. He runs around and kicks with a left foot kick from an angle at the three. Hit the post. Bad luck for Button because he had the goals lined up and hit the post. Bad luck there because Button evaded two surf players. It was four tackles by both surf players there. I felt one of them could have grabbed him, but he evaded both and had a shot to go. Here's the kick in going to be taken by Jarrett. Dirt going towards the scoreboard or northern end with a very light breeze. The kick in by Jarrett comes out to the other side and not a very good kick going to fall short. That cramp that was uh, trying to anticipate the bounce of the ball. Curly's in hot pursuit after Nelson. Nelson easily dodges around, kicks with a punt kick. Up towards the uh, half forward line, but Colby's in front, and Colby has been awarded the mark in opposition to Bagshaw. Yes, he's played that mark all day. The man in front, he's played the mark. 11 7 to 5 11. Here's the kick uh, by Colby, comes along the outer side, uh, looking for his tall man, but a very good mark taken by Wild from behind the pack. And look at these smoke bombs that have been released at the uh, northern end. Wild Here's the kick. kick. Here's the kick coming around the uh, right half forward line, but Hunter's there, and he judged the ball beautifully and playing superb football in the back pocket. That's a risky move, but it comes away to Phyllis up to centre field and Rose Warner's mark. A hand pass to Eustace. Eustace with a right foot kick, a drop punt down towards the half forward line, and Hamilton, a magnificent mark, Hamilton. He got the ride on short track, and he's about 45 to 50 yards out. Winslow Nog loves this goal. Here's the kick by Hamilton with a drop kick right down to the full forward area going offline. Phyllis is in front position, knocks it away and it comes out towards Jarrett and he clears around the halfback right flank position and we'll see a throw in. The third defence at this stage are too strong for Grinnell. They've had a very interesting duel, Phyllis and uh, also uh, Jarrett. Phyllis has two goals, equal the record set by Ken Farmer needs one more. Uh, from the uh, knock, it comes out across uh, for Kelly to handball down towards the half forward line. And uh, George Gladney is caught for holding the ball. Holding the ball against Adcock. Very good tackle. And the free is going to be taken at the centre half forward position. Looks like uh, Voigt. Voigt goes for a short pass up towards the full forward line. And uh, Patterson making good. Um, ground from the full forward area is now in position about 35 yards out right in front. Patterson going back. There's the kicker. It looks to be offline very close. Yes, it's through for one point. So they have missed a lot of opportunities in the forward area. Yes, they have. Actually, that goal, that uh, point of Patterson, it was bad checking by Rigney. Rigney was perhaps 30 or 40 yards away from Patterson and uh, very unlucky when they didn't really get a goal. There's the time clock showing four minutes of play in the uh, third term and the smoke bombs are being let off uh, behind fullback for third, uh, Bruce Jarrett. Jarrett about to kick in, favouring the outer side with a drop kick and it's another bad one going to fall short. Brooks goes up, but Mark is there. Marker now having a shot for goal, well smothered and it's down across the void. He breaks clear, gets a hand pass to Hart and Hart goes very quickly and very close to holding the ball. Picked up by Marker. Marker a lot of times has stepped forward for the sound of bell. Another opportunity uh, for Glenelg to score, uh, but uh, good uh, close checking uh, by uh, Sturt has uh, forced the ball out of play. A lot of foolish handball by Glenelg. Here's a throw in the full forward line. Knockaway comes down uh, very close to going through and a kick off the ground by uh, Rigney it looks like, and through for one point uh, to Glenelg. Glenelg has certainly had all the attacking in this quarter so far. Well, throughout the afternoon we've seen the half forward line for Sturt 
uh, giving uh, their side uh, much uh, better uh, penetration than what the, the Glenelg half forward line uh, has uh, for the Glenelg side. Here's the kick in going to be taken by Jarrett. Out towards the outer side, hasn't been kicking in quite well, but that's quite a good one. Uh, looking for uh, Wild. Wild couldn't march. Picked up by Kernahan. A hand pass out wide to the boundary line. That's uh, Nelson coming through, number 11. And now Nelson stabbed by Cramp gets a hand pass away that takes the ball out of play and we'll see a throw on the half forward left bank position. Kernahan in ruck in opposition to Wild. The knockaway comes from behind the pack. It's picked up by Marker. Marker with a hand pass. It comes across the, for uh, kick off the ground and it's been marked by Hart. Hart would be about uh, 60 yards out. A drop punt by Hart, going to fall short, but Adcock is there, and he calls down a very well-judged mark. It looked for a moment that he lost sight of it, but now Adcock forces a play around the half-back line, out towards Hicks, a very damaging player, a fourth third. Hicks on the half-back left bank position. Beautiful drop kick from Hicks across the twin centre wing and the centre of the ground. <laughs> High up the wing down the line. Yeah, now penalty as well. Good decision, that. Chessel's 10th kick coming up. There it is. Well directed right in towards the centre. Half forward position in front. The big fellow is there, Otten. Been a damaging player too, Otten. Still be his ninth kick and he's uh, taken four marks. Otten's is at centre half forward and would be 45 yards out. On only a very slight angle. Otten's usually a good drop kick. He favours the drop kick. It's again a good one. It's got the distance all right. The direction not quite there. And through for one point. Otten's has now kicked two goals too. Green Slater has kicked 5 4 for Sturt, and for Glenelg, Fred Phillips has kicked two goals. 11 goals, 8 74 Sturt to 5 13 43 Glenelg. Ready to put the ball into play. Again, a towering kick right out towards the half back line. Otten's getting up high there, misjudged the ball. This gives a chance again for Sturt. They seem away from the half forward line. A long driving kick from Willard on the uh, half forward flank from Clark has put the ball through for one point. And a different story to the first quarter. In the first quarter, we had five goals at this stage. And a tremendous opening too, John. Colossal opening, though. Comment is hard football. Our comments from John Cale, state captain and captain of Port Adelaide. The ball kicked away by Rowe out towards the half-back flank position. Finds Curley in front. Curley looks as though he's going to play on. He does now, booting it across towards the between centre and centre wing. He's looking for half, but it's Nelson over the top of Royce Hart. Uh, Saturday, Royce Hart in Richmond's Premiership team in the Victorian Football League. Today playing centre-half forward for Glenelg. The ball being kicked across towards centre-half forward position. Once again, Curley sending them back into the centre of the ground. But it's Sturt coming through with great dash again. Nelson getting it on towards the centre-half forward position. But coming out in defence, it's the Glenelg once again. Kicking it out wide towards the grandstand wing position. Gives the opportunity here for their player in Voigt. Voigt comes in. Had quite a few kicks up about his 14 today. Up it goes towards the half-forward flank position. But the mark is taken here by Adcock. 11-9, Sturt leading Glenelg 5-13. They've been playing for nine minutes in the third quarter. Up towards the centre wing position, between centre wing and the centre of the ground. Chance for Chessel, long hand pass, unattended to Rook. Two books in a half forward, 45 yards out. Fires at goals for a long way up. He's put it through. On his own again, Tilbrook. A dangerous player and brings up Sturt 12 goals. 12-9, 81 points. Glenelg 5-13, 43. Edge. John uh, Cahill, I've noticed that Royce Hart is working right up towards centre at this present stage. I was going to say that, John. Um, just prior to that uh, goal by Tilbrook there, Royce Hart was perhaps in the defence. And uh, he must have a roaming role to sit around centre, I think, John. Well, Sturt have the advantage of 81 points to 43. And the box again, it's up towards the half-forward line for Sturt, but they'll be sent out this time by the big ruckman, Kernahan, who boots it out towards the half-forward line, but a beautiful mark to Brooks. Brooks has marked the ball between centre wing and the half-back flank for Sturt, kicking it up over the centre towards the half-forward line. He was looking for Chessel, almost a chance for Chessel, but it's wingman Crab of Glenelg who picks up, sends a long hand pass in the direction of Colby, who's got the ball centre wing for Glenelg, kicking it in now towards their half-forward flank position. It's gone very close towards the boundary line. This is full-back Jarrett out there, getting a hand pass across in the direction of Brooks. Brooks is caught, and the free kick goes against him and will go Glenelg's way to Peter Marker on the half-forward flank. Marker not within scoring distance, should be able to put it well up. It's going in towards the forward clock position. He's looking for Phyllis. Phyllis needs one more to uh, break the all-time record of goals kicked in a season here in South Australia. He's got to need one more to bring up the 135 mark. But Jarrett takes the free kick in the back, and he'll take the kick in the back pocket position. 
12, 9, 81, third, and Glenelg 5, 13, 43. Here we, ha here we have, I was just going to say, Royce Hart is still sitting around centre. I feel they're losing the effect by putting him back there. Here's the kick uh, by Jarrett, comes out to the half-back line, picked up by Noonan, Noonan breaks clear. He's a very damaging little player, now dodges around. Good play, Noonan, beautiful football, up towards Castle. Colby's there for Glenelg, and looks like going out of play at the half uh, at the forward right bank position for Sturt. Yes, earlier on, Royce Hart was the live wire of the Glenelg attack, along with Peter Marker, and uh, they've got Royce Hart sitting up close to centre, and I feel that he's not close enough to kick goals, and uh, he, we haven't got the players running past him. Well, picked up by Curley. Curley hand passes into a heap of players and umpire call, calls up for a bell. I do think that uh, Curley's uh, idea, uh, John, would be to try and uh, give uh, a heart a bit more room around the centre line and bring Marker more into the play around the centre half forward position. Uh, from the uh, kick, it's a uh, throw in that's coming down towards the half forward line and Hart's gone to the ball and it's uh, picked up by uh, Short. Short left foot's up towards the half forward line as Smith is there, a knock away this time uh, by Phyllis. Eustace knocks it back across to Phyllis. Uh, Phyllis left foot kicks down towards the half forward line and Marker's going for it. Well judged, Mark. Peter Marker. Marker. Marker looking for a lead further afield. Hart racing back very quick, quickly, going down towards the full forward line. Jarrett's in front, has knocked out of his hands. And the uh, players crowd on the ball, and up by Hall calls up for a bell, a forward and centre half forward for the mill. Strange that two players in the calibre of Eustace and Shearman haven't been in the game that much today. Moroni goes up very high, taken away by Ottens, out towards the half back right bank position, out towards Clark and Crabb, Clark in front position, and the throw in on the half forward left bank position for Glenelg. Here's a throw in on the half forward line. Here's the throw on the half-forward line. Boyd is rovering. Moroni in front of opposition to Ottens has taken off hands by Bankshaw and he's ridden to the ground, but it's play on. A knockaway comes down towards the half-forward area. Attempted hand pass comes out towards a heart. And he goes for a short one with a right foot kick out towards the half-forward right bank position. Uh, the knockaway by Short in opposition to Hamilton. That's for the ball and Hamilton there has given a free away and the kick's going to be taken by Short for interference on the half-back left bank position. Not lucky for Hamilton there. Possibly the free was there, but I, I thought it could have uh, been let fly. Third or 81 to uh, Glenelg 43. The kick by Short comes up towards Kilbrook and Smith, and the play on things out the umpire. A contested mark picked up by Roseborn. A short pass out towards Eustace. Goes over Eustace's head, and the mark has been taken as centre-half forward. They play on the heart, and Hart's got the hole in the ball. That play, Glenelg because uh, the hand pass was given to Hart when he was in a heap of trouble uh, by Voigt. I think all Sturts would have wanted Sherman to take the kick too. Here's the, uh, Noonan running away again, up towards centre field, looking for Schoff, and a good spoil that time by Phyllis. Comes out towards the wing position. Crab is there, picking it up, left foot through the shocking kick, but it comes out towards Colby. It came off, and there's the kick by Colby, down towards Patterson and Adcock there. Adcock in front position, grab from behind, but gets a hurried kick away, and a magnificent punch kick out towards Schoff and Phyllis. Another good score by Phyllis, and we'll see a throw in at centre wing on the outer side. The throw in at uh, centre wing on the eastern side. Otten's in ruck in opposition to Moroni. Moroni gets the tap away over his shoulder, down towards Juicis, picked up by uh, Button, that looks like, up towards the centre field, and here's Shearman going for it, and in opposition to Hart. Hart picks it up, gets a beautiful hand pass across to a fast-moving Smith, down towards Juicis, and uh, Bagshaw's coming into him, good play by Juicis, turns out of trouble, but kicks on the outer side instead of going goalwards, out towards Phyllis, Phyllis knocks it away, picked up by Bergen, a long hand pass by Bergen, comes out towards the half-back line, and here's Marker going for a short pass, and it's a good pass. Patterson uh, has the ball spoiled away, and the knockaway comes out towards the half-back line, and Adcock's going to clear for Sturt. Up towards centre field, picked up by Clark, and Clark kicks under pressure, and Maroney's going for it. He can also Phyllis, and Phyllis brought Maroney. Bad football, Phyllis, that time, and the hand pass comes out towards Shop. He's uh, in the hot pursuit, though, but he knocks the ball on. They run into Shop, comes out towards Noonan, and Noonan now deep into the forward pocket, and he's going to have a shot for goal, a backhand, a backside, a punt kick, and a going right across goal when Greenslade was all by himself, and there'll be a throw in in the full forward left pocket. What a courageous player Schoff is. If anyone was wide open, Rick Schoff was open then, but Hunt come off second best. 
And it was a bad spoil then by Phyllis spoiling his own team man. No talking, no looking. Here's Rigney, he's got the chance, he's only 15 yards out, fires in the goal and through it goes. Third further ahead taking a strong grip on this grand final and guys well on their way to their full success at Premiership. 13-9, 13-9, 87 points to Glenelg, 5, 13, 43 points. The game slipping away from yeah. Glenelg mainly because of their own silly mistakes at this stage. I feel that if they can get a few quick goals, Sturt perhaps will tire in the last quarter. Tremendous scenes of excitement here at the Adelaide Oval, following Fred Phyllis's goal to bring up his 135th goal for the season, setting a new record. And that goal, a very handy one at Glenelg, takes them on to 7 13 55 to Sturt 14 goals, 11, 95 points. Phyllis's third goal for the match, he's 135th for the season. Been playing just over 13 and a half minutes in the final quarter, and Sturt have the 1969 grand final well and truly sewn up. 19 14, 128 points. They lead by 53 points from Glenelg. Glenelg 10 14, 74. Sturt, after a brilliant opening to the game, getting a four goal lead in the first quarter, just haven't looked back. They were 47 points up at three quarter time and have now gone further ahead. The ball out on the centre wing position at the moment gives the opportunity here for Crabb, the wingman for Glenelg. He tries a hand pass, but coming out in defence is Brooks. He knocks it across, gives the opportunity for a teammate in Chessel. And Chessel from just back of the centre wing drives it right up in a long drop kick towards the half forward flank position. Chance here for Rigney. Rigney tackled by Curly, but he's too late. Hand pass to Shearman. Shearman is coming out from the centre now. Goes for the left foot drop kick. It's a magnificent kick right up into the goal. coming up, he's already kicked eight goals for. This isn't everything going right for Sturt. There's Shearman with a 50-yard left foot drop kick. And Green Slade is about 12, 15 yards out directly in front. And he's put it through for yet another goal. Green Slade's ninth goal, nine goals for. He missed a couple early, but since then he hasn't looked back. 10, 20 goals, 14 behind Sturt. 20, 14, 134 points to Glenelg. 10, 14, 74. Sturt have too many good players all over the ground. Bagshaw, Chessel, Hicks, uh, Bob Shearman's coming in the game the last half. Kenny Eustis just can't seem to find the flow of the ball. But as, uh, Sorry, John. I was going to say, uh, there's the time clock showing 15 minutes to play in the last quarter and 60-point uh, advantage to Sturt. Curley hasn't made any changes. Uh, no, surprising, really, because um, uh, he wouldn't have lost anything by making changes. Sturt are going further ahead all the time, and I would have thought there'd been a few changes to try and lift the Glenelg side. Umpire Hall back with the ball at centre. Otten's in front position. Kernahan comes from behind. It comes out to Hicks. He's grabbed from behind to Noonan. Noonan down towards Tilbrook on the half forward line. Goes over his head. Out towards Wild. Wild with a hand pass to Tilbrook. Watch this closely. And it's through the middle. For another goal to Sturt. And they go 66 point ahead. 66 point advantage. And let's have a look at this again on ABC Action Replay. Umpire Hall back with the ball at centre. Otten's in front position. Kernahan comes from behind. It comes out to Hicks. He's grabbed from behind to Noonan. Noonan down towards Tilbrook on the half forward line. Goes over his head. Out towards Wild. Wild with a hand pass to Tilbrook. Watch this closely. And it's through the middle for another goal to Sturt. And they go 66. Thought that Sturt would have this advantage of this afternoon. No, not at the start of the game. It was electrifying, but. Uh... Tilbrook, what a great player he is. Been out in the half-forward flank and kicked a few goals from there, but always looked dangerous and had full control all day. There's Nelson getting a hand pass away out towards Bagshaw. Bagshaw's in a bit of trouble, handballs to himself, tries to follow it up. Hamilton coming through, and umpire Hall calls up for a bounce, uh, just forward of centre. Umpire Hall, bounce to bounce, his corn's coming in, came on at three-quarter time. It comes to Shearman, Shearman with a hand pass out to Clark, and invariably Sturt players are waiting for that wide hand pass. And there's Clark coming down towards Shop and Hunt. And Hunt, who's played exceptionally well this afternoon, has taken another mark. And uh, one of the umpire has been awarded 15 yards. But now Hunt coming down with a kick out towards the centre half back position, looking for Corns. Corns in front of Shearman. And he marks and plays on immediately with a high punt kick down towards the half forward line. And uh, Pattinson gets tossed out of the play. Comes out towards Adcock with uh, Hamilton and Hot Pursuit. Good turn, uh, Adcock, down towards the half forward line. And a mark taken on the half-back right flank position uh, by uh, Smith. Smith at half-back right. The kick by Smith comes out towards the centre field position and uh, right, waiting behind the pack, Sherman has taken a good mark. That was Hart and Nelson going for it and Sherman timing them 
the flight of the ball are far better. The kick by Shevin, a long driving drop kick down towards the half forward line. Colby too high. Uh, Kilbrook right across the other side, and he's put it through for another goal. That's three goals to Tilbrook in this last term, and he's been a very strong player, strong point uh, for Sturt in this last quarter. He doesn't waste a kick. There he is. He's got the full control right across half forward line. Another beautiful goal from Tilbrook. Well, Tilbrook is playing on the half forward left flank position, but you can notice that time he took the ball on the half forward right flank position and to put it through for another beautiful goal to Sturt. Here's the uh, knockaway again, comes out towards Rigney, Rose Warren in hot pursuit. Rigney gets a kick down towards the half forward line, Smith in front, and Smith has taken the mark in front of uh, Tilbrook. Here's Smith going uh, down the outer side with a punt kick. In front position, uh, Hamilton couldn't mark, down on the ground, taken by Corns, a hand pass wide. Out Adcock comes through, picked up by Voigt. Voigt lines up the goal from 40 yards out, and it looks good. It's through the middle, and a good goal from a Rover Boyd from about 40 yards out, and uh, that's a good goal to Glenelg after Sturt playing very, very well in the last five minutes. That was uh, Young Boyd's 26th kick. He's played well for the Bays all day, along with Hart, and I, I think Hunt in the back pocket's played a good game too. But a... Sturt have had plenty of good players all over the ground, where it's very hard to find a, a winning Glenelg player. Mark, I, I suppose, would have four good Glenelg players and a dozen of Sturt. Umpire Hall back with the ball at centre. Wild in ruck, gets front position, gets the tap away down, picked up by Crab the wingman. His high punch kick comes down towards Phyllis and Jarrett, and Phyllis from behind. He has a chance to put it through, but Tad Cox coming into a tackle. Then he snapshot comes right up towards goal and it's through for one point. A good uh, battle this afternoon, uh, John Cahill, between uh, Phyllis and uh, Jarrett. Yes, I think Jarrett's had the upper hand, but the ball hasn't been coming into Phyllis like it has to Greenslade. Beautiful understanding in the Sturt forwards, whereas Glenelg, high punt kits coming in, and it's not helping Phyllis any, um, uh, any whatsoever. Ben Phyllis and McGarry medalist have kicked four goals this afternoon for a season's total of 136. The ball out of play on the left half-back flank position for Sturt. Glenelg with the advantage of a slight breeze, very slight in this final quarter. Maroney going up number 23 together with Wild. The ball out, chance here for Maroney. He allows Hamilton to come through. Hamilton's got the ball close to the boundary line, gets it across to a teammate. The ball kicked in towards the forward pocket position. Adcock is there. Adcock turns them out once again. His kick going across towards the half-back flank position. Knocked on there, or attempt to be knocked on by Chessel. The mark is taken behind the pack by Hamilton. Hamilton's got it on the right half-forward flank position for Glenelg. Sends a good long kick right in towards the full forward zone. They fly. Phyllis and Jarrett behind the pack of his Voigt. Voigt very quickly smothered. Chance for Marker. Marker's got the ball with his players all around him. And it's a real battle for the ball. About 20 yards out of goal. An umpire Hall has, has called a halt and he's going to bounce. 22-14. Sturt 146 points to 11-15-81 Glenelg. Chance again for Marker. The ball comes out to him. There's a pack of players around the ball. It's Adcock who'll take it away from around the back of the pack. Beautiful he kicks into Sherman. Sherman marking between half-back flank and centre wing. This is the difference between the two sides. Sturt are looking for someone to kick to. And a kick from Sherman. is see it out wide towards the centre wing. Between centre wing and the half-forward punt. Flank chance for Schoff. Schoff gets the ball. His kick. One of the rare bad ones today. Kicking it across towards the forward pocket position. Noonan comes in. Keeps the ball or attempts to keep the ball into play. And the ball will be put into play in the forward pocket position for Sturt. The edge going off the game now. Players are getting very tired. It's been a long, hard day, and after a fierce 10 or 15 minute opening, turn a hand from behind, getting the trap. Out it comes, and here's a chance for Glenelg to take the ball away from the back line through Hunt. He gets the clear, gets his boot wood, kicking it across now between centre wing and the centre of the ground. Sherman flies, couldn't mark the ball. Chance here for Crab, gets the hand past the marker. Marker quickly onto the boot across towards the half forward line, but Adcock comes out in defence from the half back line. His running drop kick is not well directed, and it's out of play for a throw in centre wing. Sturt well on their way to their fourth successive premiership. And there's the cup that uh, they'll be presented with this afternoon. The T.S. Hill Cup for the Premier South Australian team. Next Saturday, of course, they play Richmond, the Victorian Premiers, in the championship match. Chance for Sturt again. This is Hicks, the wingman. He's got the ball between centre-half forward and half-forward flank. Kicks it in, directly pass across to Schoff, and Schoff marks the ball 45 yards out on the half-forward flank. Schoff 
It's on the angle. There's the kick. It's swinging in. The police helping them second through. They put up through for another goal. Sturt doing nothing wrong this afternoon. Bring up their 23rd goal. Rick Schott second. And a 23-14. 152 points to Glenelg. 11-15-81. I don't think Sturt can miss the goals if they try it, no? Uh, seven goals, uh, two in this last quarter already uh, to uh, Sturt. 23-14 to 11-15. Umpire Hall back with the ball at centre. The knockaway comes down towards Chessel and Banks, who have been very damaging for Sturt this afternoon. Down towards Shop. Phyllis gets the knockaway. Here's the dangerous Tilbrook on the half forward line. Very strong player Tilbrook and kicks to the high punt kick, but it's going offline and out of bounds in the full forward left pocket. Tilbrook 13 kicks for the match, three in this quarter, and each one in this quarter has realised a goal. Yes, he gets plenty of value for his kicks, Tilbrook. Doesn't get many during a game, but he doesn't waste any. Here's the throw in the full forward pocket position. Uh, Corns is in ruck with Turnerhan, an opposition to Ottens that comes down on the uh, to a good palm down, and the kick away by Patterson comes up towards uh, Eustace, back to Patterson again, goes with a short pass up to Hart, and Hart has marked it centre. Hart faints a hand pass, but now plays on, kicks with a punt kick down on the half forward line, and Adcock there spoiling his smaller opponent. The hand pass comes out to Shearman, and Sturdum getting that hand pass away every time, very quickly, putting their forwards into possession, but this time it was aimed for Clark, picked up by Eustace, a good tackle by Shearman, and Eustace's kick goes out of bounds on the half-forward left bank position. Here's a throw-in on the half-forward left bank position. And Curley's coming straight into Shearman, and they're having words. But I thought that was a very good tackle by Sherman and a very fair tackle. But it was very, very solid. Here's the uh, kick. It comes down towards Brooks. Brooks now has allowed plenty of time to kick along the half-back line. And uh, Curley and Sherman go for it. And Curley's in, uh, given one up around the shoulder and given a free. He gets it across to Marker. Marker knocks it further afield across to Rosewarn. Rosewarn lining up the goal. But the kick is well offline and out of play on the full forward right pocket. Silly with all this fight coming in the game, now the game's lost. I think uh, Curley came into Shearman, uh, but uh, I thought that was quite a fair tackle, uh, but a very solid tackle by Shearman. Here's the uh, throw in in the full forward pocket position. Kernahan got up very high. The knockaway is taken by Adcock, very reliable in the back pocket. Out towards Chessel on the half back line. Chessel gets a hand pass away to Hicks. Hicks, possibly the best foot pass on the field. Once again down to Tilbrook. He easily dodges around, and Tilbrook now putting himself within kicking distance to goal, and this time it's offline and through for one point. Yes. Sturt moves that ball along very quickly, John. Beautiful around that outer flank. That's been their attacking side all day, John, and they've moved it through like lightning. Oh. Tilbrook could have, uh, he had three or four Sturt players up in front. He could have perhaps looked for a pass there. Here's the kick by Rowe, going right down to the centre of the field, looking for Eustace, and Eustace is marked in the front of Nelson, and now Eustace playing on. Left foot down towards the centre wing position, and it looks like Mark from behind the pack. Yes, Marker had his eye on the ball, and uh, pulled down a well-judged Mark at centre wing on the western side. He's been a good player for the Nelg all day. Marker has won his half-forward left bank position. Up towards uh, Phyllis and Jarrett, and Phyllis has taken a good mark from behind Jarrett, and he's 35 yards out, right in front. Phyllis, our top goal kicker in South Australia, has uh, four goals already. Well within kicking distance, and it's right through the middle for goal number five. So he needed three to uh, break the record set by Ken Farmer, and uh, now he has kicked five goals. 23-15 Sturt to Glenelg at 12-15-87, and we've had one and a half minutes of play in time off. Yes, 26 and a half minutes of play in the final quarter. Umpire Bob Hall, number one there, Neil Curley, playing his last game for Glenelg this afternoon. The rucks go to it. It's knocked away in the ruck by Corn. Two Voigt. Voigt's been a prolific kick getter, but this one is smothered, picked up by Eustace. His kick across just over the centre, where it's marked by Sherman. Sherman coming away, steady before sending a prodigious drop kick right up into the full forward zone. Green played in front. The ball was spoiled, though. Knocked away by Rowe, picked up by uh, Colby in the back pocket. Colby's kick comes around towards the half-back flank, and the mark will be taken by Crabb, and he gets something to go on with to help him on his way. Crabb from the half-back line. The winger comes in, but an awkward-looking action. Gets in too close, taken by Schoff. Schoff looked like being the ham in the sandwich that time, but gets away. Out it comes to little Noonan. Noonan on the ground in the forward pocket. Players all around him, and umpire Hall with nothing else to do but the bouncer. 23-15, 153 to 12-15, 87. 
umpire hall to bounce the ball and ABC cameras here bringing you all the action this afternoon. Rucks to it, knocked away in the ruck by Kernahan. Chance for Little Moonan. Down he goes as Curley comes through. Gets the ball from the back line, kicking it across towards the centre half back position. And here's a chance for Gunnell to come right down the uh, ground. As the ball is kicked into the centre of the ground, marker goes with Brooks. Neither can bring down the ball, but it's uh, quickly picked up by Sherman. Sherman gets his boot with it. It uh, looks like a fire there on the outer. Uh, there's just plenty of smoke about anyway as the ball is kicked across towards the centre wing position. A chance here for Hart. He quickly got a hand pass across and it's intercepted though for Sturt and close to the boundary line. It'll be a throw in. Royce Hart, the Victorian and Richmond centre half forward. And Noel, there's a fire as centre light uh, to the streamers uh, behind the uh, southern end. Well, there's plenty of action on the field and off the field. There's plenty of smoke about down there as the ball is picked up here by uh, Rigney and Rigney's able to break away. Royce Hart playing centre-half forward today. Has played well, has had uh, 21 kicks and 10 marks. Into the centre of the ground is Chesley. He's got the ball, the long hand pass to Shop unattended. Shop's got plenty of time to steady. He's offline with this one. Kicks into the forward pocket though. The ball knocked onto the ground. Gives the opportunity here for Noonan. Noonan is swinging around. Gets the hand pass and it goes across and through. While the Ruckman, for cert, accepted that hand pass from uh, Noonan and he made no mistake to bring up goal number 24 for cert. 24 goals, 15 behind, 159 points to 12 goals, 15 behind, 87 points. Today, no doubt, the Tigers would wish to forget the Yes, yeah, so I think that uh, at the stage they've given up the ghost, Noel, but uh, after the fiery opening, it's been a good game and uh, Sturt have definitely been the better side with a lot better foot passing and a lot better teamwork on the day. Here's a Ruckman going up again, picked up by Clark, straight to uh, Eustace. He plays up towards the half-forward line, but Adcock's in front of Pattinson, and Adcock drives forward for Sturt once again, right up towards uh, Wilde and also uh, Kernahan. Kernahan from behind, knocks the ball across, and uh, coming away from defence is a long-hand pass uh, by uh, Phyllis at the Colby, up towards the centre position, but it's all Sturt there. Adcock goes over the ball, the knockaway comes further afield, it comes out towards Hamilton, and Hamilton from the just backward of the half-forward, right flank position, down to Marker, and Marker has marked it set a half-forward. As you said earlier, he's controlled his half-forward flank all day, and he's a prestigious kick, I would say he'd put this through with no trouble. The kick by Marker. Tom Ford has sent a half forward, a good kick, but it could be offline now, it's through the middle, and a good goal from Marker, making it his second goal for the match. Marker, 27 kicks and 8 marks for the game. Russell well, from a half forward flank. That's magnificent football, uh, 27 kicks, and possibly a Glenelg's uh, best man. I thought Hunter's also played well in the back pocket, John. Yes, he has, and also oh, I thought Royce Hart has done a good job under the circumstances. Well, here's umpire Hall back with the ball, and the siren should go any moment uh, with uh, Sturt Premiers for 1969, making it four premierships in succession. The bounce down once again, and Corns goes up very high, takes the ball out of the air, and knock away this time from the ground by Otten, picked up by Eustace, left foot down to the half-forward line, uh, looking for Hart, it goes over his head, Nelson uh, has checked to Hart pretty well all afternoon, but now it comes to Hart, he's lining up the goal, well within kicking distance, but it's off line, and through for a point. One point from the boot of Royce Hart. Siren to go any moment. We've had uh, six minutes of play in time on, but we've seen a lot of uh, uh, goals scored in this last term. Green Slade, the full forward for Sturt, has kicked nine goals. Been a great player all day. Here's Jared about to kick in for Sturt, comes around the half-back right, right flank position and the players play up high, comes down on the ground, uh, on the bottom of the pack there's Nelson, Brooks is there and also a Crab for Glenelg, an umpire hall falls up for a bounce on the half-forward left flank position for Glenelg. The bounce down this time, the knockaway by Corns is taken by Noonan, a very damaging rover, a bounces twice, now looking for his forward further afield, a beautiful pass to uh, Bagshaw and Bagshaw gets a hand pass to Sherman. Sherman a prodigious kick right down towards Greenslade and Greenslade uh, misses a mark. Could play row to knock that ball clear out towards the halfback right flank position. A big battle going on between these two and they're still in play and Greenslade comes around but picks up over the boundary line and there'll be a throw in between the half forward and there's the throw. The Sturt victorious winning the 1969 grand final defeating Glenelg. Sturt uh, 24-15, 159, defeated Glenelg, 13-16, 94.
Yes, Sturt taking out their fourth successive premiership. Bobby Sheeman, the skipper, there, Neil Curley, no doubt disappointed with his side showing this afternoon after such a good season. Curley finishing the season, uh, his grand football and a long football career. 24-15, 159 points, Sturt. Defeated Glenelg, Glenelg got 13 goals, 16 behind, 94 points. A terrific crowd here to see this afternoon's game in really perfect condition. A run through the goal kickers for you for Sturt. Their full forward, Malcolm Greenslade, finished up today with nine goals. 9-4 Greenslade. Tilbrook, the half-forward flanker, a very damaging player all day, kicked four. Two goals each to Rigney, Schock and Noonan. And one goal each to Chessel, Wild and Clark. And I forgot Ottens two in amongst the goals for two. Ottens two. Now for Glenelg, full forward Freddie Phyllis kicked five to give his bring his season tally to 137. The CS Hill Kip, uh, Cup about to be presented to the third side. The presentation will be made by His Excellency the Governor of South Australia, Sir James Harrison. Uh, Phyllis five, two goals each for Glenelg to Hart, Voigt and Marker. One goal each to Eustace and uh, Rosewater. Very soon we're to see the presentation of the TSL Cup to the Premier team for 1969 Sturt playing, their, playing in their fifth successive grand final and they've been successful in the last four. A great record by Sturt. And uh, of course following the presentation of the Cup, the third side will make a victory lap of honour. John, you must agree that there was a perfect exhibition of football this afternoon by Sturt. Oh, good power football, John. They thoroughly deserve the Premiership again this year. Jubilant third players. We know how Curly feels to run second the last three years anyway. There's Royce Hart leaving the field. Royce Hart played quite well this afternoon at centre half forward for third, but didn't have the opportunities uh, which uh, we expected because the uh, centre line and Ruckman for Sturt were on, in control and they got their half forwards moving with far more precision uh, than the Glenelg half forward line. John, uh, where do you think the advantage uh, for Sturt uh, lay during the afternoon? Well, I think their half forward line, John. Um, Tilbrook, Shop and Bagshaw was Chessel changing there. Right throughout the game, mate, they had complete control all day and they were creating opportunity. And uh, with the Rovers running down, particularly Noonan and then Rigney in the latter half, um, I think it was mainly through their half forward and players streaming down through that line. They were constructive all day, and especially Darrell Hicks also. I thought a great advantage uh, to Sturt was their, were their Ruckman, uh, in particular Bagshaw and Chessel. I think they were uh, far too mobile uh, for the Sturt combination. Yes, they were. They, they were constructive all day, and they didn't waste a kick either. This was the beauty of the Sturt side. Uh, I think pretty well every man who had tee before he kicked the ball, he looked who he was going to kick the ball to, and uh, by gee, it's good playing in front of players like that. I thought that Sturt uh, moved the ball around a lot, a lot better and thoroughly deserved their victory. By him. Your Excellency, Mr. Hill, ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of the South Australian National Football League, I'll ask His Excellency to hand the TF Hill Cup to Mr. Bob Shearman, the captain of the third team. The presentation is up today by His Excellency, the Governor of South Australia, Sir James Harrison. Bobby Shearman. Premiership pennant, together with the T.S. Hill Cup. A jubilant Bobby Sherman. And notice Mr. Hill, the donor of the cup, in the background. And away they go on the lap of honour. Tilbrook. Nelson there in the centre, taking the cup around the field. That's the Glenelg side tripping off the field, no doubt disappointed and very tired after this afternoon's game. Yes, there's no greater contrast than to be a winner of a grand final and a loser. And I think it's every footballer's ambition to play in a winning grand final side. And you certainly haven't played football until you have played in a winning grand final side. It's, it's unbelievable the 
it's a joy after a game. You, you don't mind sacrificing. All the sacrifices throughout the year are well worth it uh, when you do win the grand final. Uh, John, uh, your best players quickly for Sturt and then Glenelg. Well, for Sturt, uh, there's a lot of players you could bracket. Um, probably Green played with nine goals. He would be as good as any. Noonan, Bagshaw, Chilbrook, Hicks. Um, in the back lines, Adcock, uh, Brooks. Uh, they had good players, all, uh, not Brooks, sorry, uh, Cherry Short played well. Uh, they had players all over the ground that played well. Um, for Glenel, uh, John, I'd probably go for Marker on a half forward flank. 27 kicks from half forward, that's a colossal effort. Um, the lad in the back pocket was Hunt. Uh, he played a good game, and also Hart, I think I'd, I'd give those the three best for Glenel. I thought Boyd did uh, quite well. Boyd also, that's right. He had 24 or 25 kicks, and uh, he was a player I overlooked. Well, I think overall, John, you must uh, congratulate Sturt on their uh, victory this afternoon. They uh, showed far more skill uh, than, uh, than Glenelg, and their purpose in going forward uh, was far superior uh, than Glenelg's side. Yes, before the game, there, there was some doubt as to whether Sturt would last the game out, having only one game in five weeks. But as the game progressed, uh, they got totally on top, and uh, they eclipsed Glenelg, especially in the second half. I thought uh, Ottens and Wild played quite well in Ruck as well. They did, yes. A little bit of reading the third side as they come around in front. They've gone around from right around the ground and here, passing in front of the member stand with Bobby Sherman and the rest of the side. And carrying the trophy in front, uh, Tilbrook, Chessel, and <laughs> smoke bombs and plenty of... There's been plenty of smoke here this afternoon. I say where the smoke was fire. They could have perhaps put um, Endersby on for a run, put the reserves on just for a run to give them a feel of the grand final fever. We've got smoke bombs galore again and fires. I think we've had everything today, no? And here's the crowd coming, and we did see a fire late in the game at the end of the, uh, at the southern end. Right, well that's it for season 1969. Sturt the winners of the grand final, winning their fourth successive premiership, the Nelg striving for their first since 1934. They're striving in vain and they may have to wait uh, another year. The final score again at the Adelaide Oval in the grand final, Sturt 24 goals, 15 behinds, 159 points, defeated Glenelg. 13 goals, 16 behind, 94 points. Next Saturday, the South Australian Premier Sturt meets the Victorian Premier's Richmond. And now for the time being, from the Adelaide Oval, we're not quite uh, going back to the studio yet. I'm just running through the goal kickers once again. For Sturt, Greenslade has kicked nine. Four to Tilbrook, who played brilliantly on the half-forward flank. Two goals each to... Uh,